here's a reason never to leave your house again. Uh, many cases are being reported across Britain of needle spiking. Have you heard of this? No. At nightclubs in the UK, needle spiking is described as administering an injection to someone without their knowledge or consent. Oh, COVID vaccine. That's, <laughs> That's how we're going to get, it. That's That's get it. it. That's how we're going to get it. So, usually in a bar. I got to say this. I have seen more footage of people being injected with uh-huh. needles uh, and syringes in the last 19 months yeah. than I have in the previous 50 some odd years of life. It's good I don't, B-roll. Why do we need B-roll of fat people being injected when you're just talking about the Delta variant? We we get it. I mean, everyone's over it. Like everyone's like, it's, 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 it's a cavalcade of just people getting just stabbed in the arm. More bothersome B-roll of the constant stabbings in the arm when talking about COVID or when they would talk about obesity and just show fat people walking. Just bellies. Yeah, but like never heads. Yeah. I always cut off with the heads. I like watching the fat people because <laughs> it was always ironic if they were holding food. Mm-hmm. You know, they had a bag of Wendy's or something. That was always good. Grease and then, stains. Yeah, and, and then I could also judge. You know, I could mm-hmm. go, look at that person. Boy, they let themselves go. Right. Boy, their 10-year reunion's going to suck. They right. must have packed on 100 pounds. It's just a constant jabbing in the arm. I just... It's, it's, it's nauseating. Do you me. think it's, well, that's funny because ironically I was thinking, do you think it's a way to subconsciously desensitize us to being afraid of needles so we'll get vaccinated? It has worked. I, I used to, if there was ever a film where someone was tying off oh. and shooting heroin or something, I yeah. would look the other me way. Too. Now now I get a boner. <laughs> <laughs> but this is like, this, a long way. <laughs> this is, uh, I mean, okay, I get like covering your drink. Somebody bumping into you and like, <laughs> Stabbing you with like a tranquilizer, so like it makes me so squeamish, like I feel like I'm gonna pass out. So, groups, Colin, have you heard of this? Oh, wait, you're muted. Yeah, I, 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 you gotta unmute you. Sorry, we got him, we got you. Yeah, no, I hadn't heard of that, but you know, the Brits are always on the cutting edge of something. (laughs) Yeah, they're on the vanguard. Well, groups, uh, from more than 30,000 UK universities. Nope, 30, because that would be a lot of universities, have joined an online campaign calling for the boycott of nightclubs. Campaigners say they're seeking tangible changes to make nighttime venues safer so nobody has to endure this. They said it's happened to men and women. Although, if you notice something I didn't report, um, I I checked three different sources on this, and a couple girls talked about the feeling of fear that it gives them, but I was having a hard time locating an actual example. I don't know if this is some weird razor blade in the candy thing that's happening, but people are taking it very seriously. What are they injecting them with? Hmm. I mean, I think what they're worried about is is something with a roofie effect, you know? Well, so they would put someone unconscious and then somehow... Double bag. Leave with them. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Listen, like a I, Ferrari just dart. Just over your shoulder and right. a fireman's carry. <laughs> I don't consider myself a roofie expert, but I do know my way around a roofie. Oh, do you now? We're in Vegas. Part of the <laughs> part of the sell of the roofie is them not knowing they've been roofied. <laughs> Right. The the problem with the stab in the arm is that's going to immediately that's a tell. Yeah, but once it happens, you can't do anything about it. I guess, but then you got to kind of get them from the dance yeah. floor into the into the minivan, yeah. right? Yeah, there are things about this that, like I said, I looked at a couple different sources, but this, of course, it's a super grabby headline, so it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. But I'm having a hard time pinning down what exactly is going on. You said pin. Mm. Yeah. But I, I this may be one of those things, we get going with stuff like Rottweiler mm. attacks, yeah. or pit Killer bull bees. attacks. Bassals. We go pit bull attacks, you know, and it turns out there were three in the last 11 years right. or whatever, but we get a little momentum. Maybe, right. maybe that's this. Well, I hope it is. I certainly hope that is. So Donald Trump Jr. is cashing in on the Alec Baldwin situation by saying... Nothing political. You heard Colin. (laughs) T-shirts. Next suggestion. (laughs) Did you see the T-shirt? No, I did not. I got you the T-shirt. Oh, my God. It's got to be horrible. There's a T-shirt. It's horrible. I'm going to show you. It's got to be horrible. Uh, The Times, Herald, and Daily Beast report that Trump Jr. had ads for the shirt posted online. Oh, dear God. It says, guns don't kill people. Alec Baldwin kills people. And this was within, what, 48 hours, 72 hours of shooting. Oh, my God. That is horrible. Yeah. I do not endorse that in any way. He also posted a Photoshop pic of Alec Baldwin wearing the shirt. They Uh, are being sold for $27.99. Do we know it was Photoshop? I know. 
I know what the staff's getting for Christmas. Good question. <laughs> um, he went on to joke about Hutchins' death with a meme featuring Homer Simpson in the line, let's all watch Alec Baldwin blame the gun. But that got deleted. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure who's buying this, but um, that would be an interesting uh, self-selecting group. You always wonder just how much classier can he get? <laughs> He's really set the bar high for himself. Well, you got to merchandise like Mel Brooks would say. Merchandising, merchandising. Yeah, that is that is too soon, <laughs> if, if ever. Yeah. That's uh, Alec Baldwin. And the shirts are not as comfortable as Tommy John's. Thank you. So that's the headline. Colin Gunn. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Uh, so something crazy happened at a football game recently, and this time it wasn't a fan attacking another fan. So that's the headline. During the Cincinnati Bengals game against the Ravens in Baltimore on Sunday, a drunk Ravens female fan yes. tried to climb into the radio broadcast booth. Oh, nice. The Baltimore Sun. From the outside? <laughs> yes. Wow. Reports that the moment came late in the first quarter as play-by-play -play broadcaster Jerry Sandusky was in the middle of talking. Color analyst Femi Ayan Badejo. Jerry Wait, Jerry Sandusky? Is, is that, that did possibly... stop the conversation. Are there two Jerry Sandusky's? <laughs> the famous rapist <laughs> from uh, Penn State? <laughs> Not that Jerry Sandusky. <laughs> Is it possible? Was that Jerry Sandusky? It was definitely Sandusky. Hold on, I'm looking it up right now. I thought now. it was Jerry. I thought it was Jerry, too. I thought it was Jerry, too. Yeah, Jerry on. with I a think G, the, though. There's another level yeah. to the story. G, Jerry G-E-R-R-Y Sandusky. <laughs> wow. I thought that was... What are the odds? Wow, what are the odds? Are they related? The yeah, same exact Probably name? not. Probably not. We'll find out. Well, well no, wait. Let's see about well, the other Jerry. Well, the last name's the same. That helps is, in is, the relations, right? Was the right? State Jerry a J or a G? It was they a J. Are, I think it was a J. Oh, J. Okay. They are not related. Ah, but they, they have the same last name. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Well, that's kind of smart around the football <laughs> circle. <laughs> so as as he's giving the play by play, you hear Femi start going, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" And then. It's interrupted in this panic as this woman's trying to crawl into the booth. Here's a clip of them recapping the incident. T. Higgins was the target. Anthony Averett had great coverage, and that is going to force the punt team on. If you were listening, you heard Femi say, what are you doing? What are you doing? He was not talking to the players or the coaches. We actually had a fan who was trying to climb into the broadcast booth. She said, I'm a veteran, and I'm looking for a drink. <laughs> yeah, I don't serve uh, drinks at the game. I might make some cocktails at home, but this is not the right time or place. Oh, thank you. You don't say. <laughs> well, I, I would argue it's a, a the perfect time. pretty good time to have a drink yeah. and a pretty good place to have a drink. Yeah. You know, watching watching professionals from sport. the booth. Yeah, well, from the, the best booth. place. Yeah, and don't you love that it was a lady? That's pretty great. I mean, yeah. doesn't that confirm everything you've been saying? Well, Gina was a woman. We don't know yeah. if she was a lady. That's true. It wasn't Probably very didn't ladylike. Act much like a no. lady. <laughs> Probably could see right up her bloomers when That's they were right. hoisting her up there. Showed a little Not ankle, mm -hmm. like a tart. Mm -hmm. All I know is that most places that serve alcohol at stadiums have easier access. You don't have to climb over anything to, uh, to actually true. get the They'll drink. They'll often bring mm -hmm. it to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bring it right point. to your chair. That's right. You go right out to the mezzanine level mm -hmm. and get it. Get yourself a beer. Yeah, you don't That's have to cost anybody. I never thought of it that way. I'm, I'm going to readjust. <laughs> <laughs> a pair of Michael Jordan game-worn sneakers from his rookie season just sold at Sotheby's auction in Vegas, shattering the record for the most expensive game-worn footwear. If you don't know the answer already, would you like to guess? I think I know the answer. Okay, Brian. Uh, half a mil. Okay, Colin. Two point five million. Oh wow! Meet you guys in the middle. One point five. Wow. Oh uh, yeah. CBS Still News. Stupid. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> CBS News reports that the white leather shoes. We have a picture with the red Nike swoosh and soles were worn by Jordan in the fifth game of his rookie season with the Chicago Bulls, when Nike's Jordan-affiliated brand was just barely a thing. Uh, the price easily beat the record held by a pair of Nike or Jordans. The previous one, which sold for 615000 last year at Christie's auction. So Jordan's uh, their autograph, by the way, size 13 lace-ups were in good condition overall uh, with signs of court wear and tear, which I would imagine helped. Do you think, <laughs> what do you think would happen to the value if you broke up the pair? Nah. Like, eh. what if, yeah, all right, so let's just say they're worth 1.5. Right. And let's say you own the shoes, 
but you got into some tax issues right. or you're falling behind on some mortgage payments, but you only, you know, you needed several hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, that's actually a good question. The argument I would make to the person I was trying to sell the shoe to is when you put it in the Lucite case They're of your library at school yep. or your library in your, your stately manner, you only put the one shoe. That's right. You don't mm -hmm. really display them as a pair. You just kind of put the one shoe. With the reflection, it looks like a pair. That's mm. right. And yeah. I do have one of Don Magic Wand's high tops. Oh, really? The I do. Oh, wow. Yeah, we, and I think he What are you doing here? It's green and gold. <laughs> For, for the money and for the honey. For the honey. And, uh, yeah, I think those some, are quite some the value. Point, the pairs are going to break up because oh. the siblings are going to survive and they're mm -hmm. going to be an argument. Yeah. And oh, yeah. he wants one yeah. and she, they're just going to go, you take the right shoe, you take the left shoe. Yeah. That's actually, because at first I thought, eh, you know, that would that would nosedive the value. But it, why would it? I Wouldn't so, it make it more rare because you know there's another one out there you have to match? Oh, right. Mm -hmm. One of two. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't saw Pete Rose's bat in half, <laughs> but you could do, you could yeah. break up the pair. No, I think you're right. I guess. Uh, Jeff Bezos is far from done with space. In fact, I think he just dipped his toe in the last couple of times. He is now setting his sights on a place to stay the next time he makes the trip. So the Amazon and Blue Origin founder is making plans for a space station, which he hopes to have built and operational by the end of the decade. The uh, space outpost, which he's referring to as Orbital Reef, is described as a mixed-use business park in space. He wants it to be 32 thousand square feet. He's working with Boeing and Sierra Space on building the space station. Here's just a short clip from their like promotional video. Orbital Reef is a full-fledged commercial space station. Think of it as a village. Think of it as many different organizations and people in their own parts of Orbital Reef doing their own activities where all types of companies can come together and do research and or production and also provide opportunities for tourists to come and just experience what space is like. I have bad, bad news for oh, everybody. No. What? Uh, these guys, Bezos and Richard Branson mm -hmm. and uh, who's the third guy? Musk. Mm. Elon Musk. They're not dummies. Okay. Yeah. You Hold with on. me? So far, yeah. Okay. They're not dumb dudes. I don't dudes. see where the bet is, but all right. <laughs> all right. It's going to take a turn for the ominous. I won't deny the premise. I'm not. <laughs> right. Yes, and They're not dumb. Okay. All right. They're dumb. They're super smart. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're all planning on living to about 140. Mm -hmm. Oh. They're yeah. taken when infused. They're yeah. sleeping in sure. Michael Jackson's coffin. Right. You know what I mean? Cryogenic. Uh, they ain't. Yeah. They ain't going to be claimed by prostate cancer at sixty-eight, right? right. I mean, they're all. No. They're planning on going on for a while, right? Mm -hmm. They want to age like Eugene Levy, like Eugene, <laughs> and keep getting better looking, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, everyone's like, "Oh, they love space." All of a sudden, they're big fans of outer space. Mm -hmm. Didn't hear Bezos talking a whole lot about space, you know, a number of years ago. No. But they all love space. Okay. It's space, space, space. Then it's like, hey, tourism and hey, Bill Shatner and whatever. Meanwhile, different strain of COVID circling the globe. Sure. High above Chinese us. just fired a missile that's capable of putting nuclear warheads on it that just circumnavigated the globe. They're not dumb. They get the inside skinny. They got the info. They're looking around, uh -huh. and they're going, this whole shit show's going up in about four and a half years. It's an Elysium situation. They're just up above yeah, watching up down below. Turn on this. the news. Watch some COVID reports. Check in on China. What's going on in the Middle East? Oh, they figure this one out. And they're talking about, oh, wouldn't it be great to oh, you can come. expand kids' minds mm -hmm. and Bill Shatner? They're fuck, they're looking for an out. Right. They're getting the fuck out of here. And they're getting tons of support from Right. They're the, like, isn't this great? Yeah. Look what we're doing. Families can make it. No, research. no. They're they're looking down the road. They see the way the wind is blowing, and they're getting the fuck out of here. And they're all on the clock. That's why all the rich guys are going to live to 140 are all interested all of a sudden in outer space. Wow. Used to be, well, we'll build a bunker yes, somewhere go, in some go mountainside. In, go down. That nah, ain't going to cut up, it. Up that bunker's going to save you from whatever that Wuhan lab cooks up next. So they're getting out. That's what's happening. I see it. I see it in advance. I'm going to start kissing ass. 
You're immediately. Right. I right. went in. I went in on that shuttle. I was making fun of like, who needs to go? Oh, well, it's I an exit. Uh, it's an exit plan. It's a strategy. They're I all think, planning on so it. So they'll be. Uh, they're going to restart the human race from this space station yes. filled with business people. That's me. <laughs> I'll be there, adding comedic <laughs> relief. <laughs> Who wants a Denver <laughs> omelet, fellas? I'm here to please. I have no skills. I'll see a happy ending. <laughs> I think you're right, and I hate it. <laughs> it sounds funny, but if you really start yeah. thinking about, it. and by the way, they're in a hurry. Yeah, they, space they, race. They they ain't meandering. They're like, you guys got between three and seven years is best I can tell. So like a blast off. For the God knows rock. what inside skinny yeah, they have. Yeah. Not like they don't have. <laughs> they got the people. They know people in China. Oh, they do their best business with everyone there. He's Operations. got a couple of contacts yes. over there. Yes. He probably knows what's going on. Oh, shit. So if they're up there and the entire world is destroyed mm -hmm. and it's just them, will they still have the power? All their money will be gone. Mm. Well, maybe we'll get lucky and just be enslaved by the Chinese. Yeah. Maybe, we won't in <laughs> maybe we'll just put us in re-education <laughs> camps or yeah. something. They and want to annihilate I'll be yelling, yeah. I'm a carpenter. I'm a carpenter. I have skills. <laughs> Colin over here is fucking worthless. Take, throw him in the volcano. He can't do anything. I can make you laugh from nothing. He tells <laughs> jokes in a language you can't understand. I can put wood together. Also, doesn't Ooh. it seem weird to have stuff in space that isn't, like, government-run? Like, some private guy has his own space condo? Yeah. yeah. I, it's it's a it's little like when you see people on a city street in a golf cart. Yeah. And you go, does he get to do is that? Is that street legal? <laughs> Whose is that? Is that is space legal? Is he get a ticket? Yeah, I think they're working this out as we speak. Oh, for sure. Well, they're way ahead of us. But I, I, I think this. they're up there. Oh, when the nukes hit, the, make uh, uh, make um, landfall, can't burn Bitcoin. That's right. right. Bitcoin. And they're getting it funded by, like, if they're saying you can do film production and stuff, why wouldn't Sony invest in all these oh. other big companies? Yeah, I don't know. But, yeah. you know, Colin brings up a philosophical question. What will they be in charge? Well, they'll be in be charge alive. of however much they can build in the next four years <laughs> before right. the whole shit goes down. But I... I yeah, seem... when's, uh, when, when, ten, was it uh, 10 years from now they're planning uh, on this Within station? the decade. They, so, they, yeah. all, they, they all seem to be in a hurry. I don't like it now. Mm -hmm. Now they, I hate it. They all feel, I feel like they're on the clock, and I feel like they... Did I mention these guys were smart? And good-looking. Yeah, good good looking. <laughs> Virile. Not dummies. Capable. Not dummies. <laughs> no, nah, they know which oh, way the so wind's blowing. Oh, so charismatic. Mm-hmm. Great head of hair. Mm -hmm. I mean, wait a second. Shatner, that's just like a publicity right. stunt. You know I mean? Right. Take the old fat guy and put him up there, and we'll get the heat off, the prying <laughs> eyes. You know what I mean? I was going, what are you doing up there? I don't right. trust you. That's right. eh, Shatner. Come on. Yeah. Mm. Fuck. Shit. I think you're right. Uh, yeah, every week they're going to send up someone from the 70s. Just as a <laughs> That's right. PR thing. That's right. Well, let's continue down the sci-fi Soylent uh, rabbit hole, because if you haven't seen it yet, McDonald's has a new burger. It's called the McPlant. Um, this is their latest in the in the sort of plant based burger space, which is really mm -hmm. everywhere. It features a Beyond Meat patty topped with American cheese, your favorite sliced tomato, lettuce, onions, pickles, ketchup, mustard, mayo on a sesame seed bun. Started uh, testing. It's, it's got go American cheese. Mm -hmm. so it's like, let's get a fake hamburger. Uh -huh. Put <laughs> fake cheese That's on right. it. Come on, everyone will love it. It'll everyone start, loves fake. Well, we're going to be a test market. So it's California, Iowa, Louisiana, and Texas. We can all uh, yeah, give it a try or not give it a try in November. California is always like some weird place like Fresno. You know what I mean? No, like right. Or Bakersfield or right. something. But it's like, who cares anymore? Every that, that was the brilliant thing about this, like Impossible Burger and Beyond Burger. They didn't go right to the grocery store. They infiltrated the fast food market, yeah. which is pretty brilliant. And between that in the McRib. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a lot of range there in the weird meat in the department. Press, the, yeah, the, com department. the compost department. or compound, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let me tell you guys about uh, Clavio.com. If you're getting an online business off the ground, you're probably uh, short on time and long on a to-do list. You need uh, great email marketing to keep your customers coming back. Save time with Clavio, the email and SMS marketing platform built for the e-commerce brands. Fast and easy to use. Create a free account and start sending messages and driving sales in under an hour. Over 100 
ready to go integrations. You can uh, pull unlimited data like customer shopping behavior and product recommendations right away. Even features, uh, built in guidance to seize bigger opportunities and improve your results. It is Clavio. Right, Dawson? Get started with a free account at Clavio.com slash Adam. That's K L A V I Y O.com slash Adam. All right, what else you got, Gina Grant? Scientists studying some ancient human feces found a 2,700-year-old salt mine worker in the Austrian Alps that had a very balanced diet consisting of beer and blue cheese. The God's finding is <laughs> in a salt mine. <laughs> the finding is the earliest the evidence. Dies. But this is a big deal because it's the earliest evidence of sophisticated cheese making in Europe and proof that beer and blue cheese has been considered this great combination for however many years. As to how this feces was preserved, it's apparently thanks to the constant temperature of around 46 uh, degrees Fahrenheit and the high concentration of salt at the mine that the miner's feces was preserved this well. So that how was How many lunch. years old is 2700. it? 2700. I wonder if that guy had a feeling like I'm going to take a dump and one day <laughs> civilizations unknown to us today will find my fecal remains and I will be heralded as 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 the great man. And oh, come on, Shut Tim, up, just Bert, finish you're taking digging. your shit, would you? <laughs> Have another Paps and some blue cheese, would you? And spare us. I'm telling you one day I had a vision. Yeah. It's an odd lunch. I'm guessing uh, no one starts out as a fecal scientist. <laughs> no. It, it somehow, at some point, you make a detour. You're right. No. How does that Well, I that started happen? as a paleontologist, mm -hmm. but it was just, there was nothing going on. <laughs> so it just moved to poo. <laughs> right. Yeah. I kept I, digging. And... No, no one makes that proclamation in high school. Mm. It's some, no. I, I feel you stay like, away from that kid. I feel like career day. I feel like colleagues steer you toward the fecal route. You know what I mean? Like, hey, Brad, maybe you'd be a little more comfortable in the shit lab. Why? What's wrong? Well, it's just your hygiene is. I'm just saying, maybe you'd be more comfortable over there. Many of the ladies shot. are worried. <laughs> Give it a shot. Say you like it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they say shit is a window to the soul. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, I thought it was yeah. the eyes. Oh, well, maybe that too. Yeah, I thought it was the eyes it's of the been adapted over the you, years. You can learn a lot, is what I'm saying. I mean, if, I get it. If you just it. take the time. Right. All right. Can I just say this? Yeah. I'm not here to recruit for the fecal lab, but. Sounds like you are. But. But. They got a vending machine that has Coke and Pepsi, whereas what? the regular one's just Pepsi. Sure. And Pepsi related yeah. products, obviously. And also, eh, look at a person's femur bone from a thousand years ago. What do you really know? Yawn. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you rummaged through their shit, mm -hmm. and now you got something. You really know someone. It's like it's like yeah. a, a, a novel just is written in front of you every time you scoop through someone's shit. You do make it sound very romantic. Mm. Yeah. It's, yeah, it sounds intriguing. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, all the, all the brightest. You couldn't tell from looking at them, but all the best <laughs> end up in the shit lab. Which we don't even call. Yeah, a I was shit gonna say. Lab. Sorry, I mean, is that a, the technical term or? Oh, it's a fecology. Yeah, it's a colloquial. I see. It doesn't leave the lab. I see. You familiar with Jonas Salk? Of <laughs> sure. Cure of polio. Of mm -hmm. course. Started in the poop lab. That's you right. Don't say. Oh yeah. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, go in there okay. when you're just getting for a, shits. When you're getting your Coke or Pepsi. Yeah. Oh. Look, look up on. The, look up at the Wall of Fame. Sold and You'll sold. You'll see Jonas Salk looking right back <laughs> at you. Adam Curie, poop lab. Up on the wall. You're making a decent must go, argument. Uh, mm -hmm. You must go through a lot of corn. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of undigestibles. Yeah. Uh, how about one more? I'm not doing that. There's one I want to talk about, but I'm afraid it's going to make your teeth hurt. So they're making blue cheese and beer? Yeah. 224? 3,000 almost years ago. Awesome. Wow. That's why it's such a big deal. The sophisticated cheese making, and that's your lunch. That's your lunch in the salt mine. Beer and blue cheese. Yeah. I wonder if that guy must have been a horrible lover. You know, I mean, just imagine the smell Sluggish. of that guy. And again, hygiene, probably deodorant wasn't invented. No. You know. Probably. You know, probably. Salt. Just yeah. going off it. But again, we got to check the shit, see if they had deodorant. There's going to be trace amounts. Dioxides. <laughs> trace amounts. Can I do one more yes. story that may make your teeth hurt? Okay. And there's a little trigger mm. warning for everyone. 
Um, there are companies out there now that can add several inches to your height. Oh. I'm yeah. not going to get into it. Okay. <laughs> but it is, it, it costs between $70,000 and $80,000. Are they inserting bones into your bones? They're cutting really. femurs or something. It's a very painful for, pr procedure. I'm not going to get into it. You can't Does handle it. Involve it. No, 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 but yes, it. they do insert a gadget. Or a disc and it or has something. it has a remote control, so oh, it slowly sweet. stretches go, out go gadget legs. yourself. Wow. I'm not going to get into the de details. After spending the money and enduring the pain, patients can expect to gain between two and five inches once everything is healed. And wow. you're not just one of those. Remember those little 60s and 70s toys where, mm -hmm. like, say, like a horse was on a platform. Yeah. You, you know what I'm talking about. You, you push, push the, the bottom button in the middle. <laughs> This is uh, you look like that afterwards. This is how out of entertainment we were. <laughs> I you, love that thing. You took a piece of elastic yarn, <laughs> yes. you strung it through some beads in the shape of a pony, yes. and then you just press your thumb and watch him fall and, and watch it dip down. <laughs> and uh, oh my god, hold on, let me get my view master <laughs> come down to earth. <laughs> You'd hold the view master, I'm like, oh, it's the Grand Canyon. I'm in Paris, <laughs> it's the Grand Canyon. Like, you just flip yep. it again, it's yep. Monument Valley, it's virtual reality. Uh, this was entertainment, yeah. and then it, but at a certain point, now the Corollas, I never got any. If, if again, if it if it plugged in, took batteries, or brought joy, was not welcome in the Corolla house. But at some point, one of the rich kids got hold of a talking view master. Oh, yeah. I've never heard of a talking oh, view. Oh, you haven't lived. Apparently. That's insane. Chris, pull up the talking view master. Okay, and yeah. Instead of you having to yell, it's the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> with a very stately voice would sure. be like, that's you're, the Grand Canyon. You're in the Grand Canyon. What? That's right. Do you think our friend of the show, Dan Dunn, would rather have a talking view master or the virtual reality porn glasses? Ooh, that's mm. got to be tough. Yeah. Yeah. Probably go with the porn glasses. You have but to ask him. Yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't seen that guy in a long time. It's been ages. <laughs> Where's that guy been? Oh, he talked he to you around. not 48 hours no ago. No way. Oh, yeah. Get the hell out of here. I've been in Fresno riding this whole time. Oh, yeah, Don't tell me right I talked to, to Dan Dunn. <laughs> yeah. All right, should we should we bring it home? You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Kicking the nuts. Gina, Gina That was the news with Gina Grad. Donny Osmond's going to be on tomorrow. Nice. We that have is a the view? greatest story I have ever heard. We have a Viewmaster commercial, a talking Viewmaster commercial. Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Now with the new electronic talking Viewmaster viewer, <laughs> batteries not included, see and hear 3D scenes from Disney's Mickey's Christmas Carol. Just snap in a cartridge. Ah, humbug. And the characters look and oh, sound so real. I had that Merry one. Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. You think you could reach it's in terrible, and touch him. I had that. See and hear A-Team and Muppets on cartridges each sold separately. The talking Viewmaster viewer with earphone, volume control, and three Mickey Mouse cartridges. Yeah. Brian, I, were you rich? No, no, uh, it was 1983. Uh, it would keep me quiet and, uh, and not bothering anyone. And I, I was such, I was a kid, I was four, five years old. And uh, they were, I was convinced that when I finally knew there was a Christmas Carol, the Dickens Christmas Carol, I thought that was a ripoff mm. of uh, the Mickey Mouse Christmas Carol. It was oh, the same right. story, right? Sure. <laughs> right, like when you hear a song that got remade. Right. Original, exactly. Right. I think we're alone yeah. now. Right. Um, that wasn't even the first gen. Chris, the first gen of the talking Viewmaster was like 70s era, like weird and beige and funky, kind of like looked like the old school one, I think, with like a voice module stuffed on the bottom. Anyway, let me tell you about uh, Liquid IV, man. If you work out and you break a sweat, cooler weather out there. You can miss signs of dehydration. And by the way, flu season is upon us. You need to stay hydrated. You need your immune system strong. Plus, there is the occasional holiday hangover, which I got an early start on last weekend. One stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. Five essential vitamins. More vitamin C than an orange. As much potassium as a banana. Drew always talks about having a potassium mm -hmm. or having a banana if you've uh, tilted a few the night before. No artificial flavors. No preservatives. Less sugar than an apple. 
flavors. Well, they got strawberry, lemon, lime, pina colada, guava, watermelon. It is liquid IV, right, Dawson? Grab your favorite liquid IV flavors nationwide at Walmart, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code Adam at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code Adam at liquidiv.com. If you want to go to ColinAndBradShow.com, yeah, that's the old school. Um, A sound bar. Yeah, the old school view master <laughs> talking one. Um, you can go to uh, ColinAndBradShow.com to find out when they're coming to a city near you. They're coming to Cedar Rapids, Iowa. They're coming to Rockford, Illinois. That's on November 4th and November 5th. And uh, I'm going to be in Baltimore. McGooby's doing uh, stand-up there November 5th. And uh, November 6th, I'll be around Philly at the Keswick uh, Theater. So, uh, Colin, thanks for joining us, my friend. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm going to take a dump, and one day, (laughs) civilizations unknown to us today will find my fecal remains, and I will be heralded. As 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 the great man and oh come on Shut Tim up, just Bert, finish you taking your shit would you <laughs> have another paps and some blue cheese would you spare us I'm telling you one day I had a vision. <laughs>